Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Amazon Fire Phone. The Fire Phone is no longer a brand new smartphone, however, as we head into 2016, we're going to briefly discuss in this video whether or not it's still a good value for the money. This is important because the Fire Phone, when it was first released, was being priced at $200 with a two-year service agreement. It was too expensive and not the right price, just because it's a uh, juxtaposition with the rest of Amazon's pricing strategy, which is to be inexpensive, affordable, cheap, and able to target a wide amount of consumers. And at 200 bucks with a two-year service agreement, it's the same price as a iPhone 6 success, as well as flagship Android devices, and hence, the Fire Phone cannot compete. But now, the Fire Phone can be found unlocked for around 100 bucks or so, uh, sometimes $150 if you look on Amazon and eBay. So that makes it a pretty good value for the money in terms of the specs. It has a 4.7 inch display, which is just the right size in my opinion. It has uh, a 720p HD resolution, so it's not quite 1080p, but it still does a good job of displaying back your images as well as videos. It has kind of this 3D technology. It's not the same type of 3D that we saw with the HTC Evo, for example, Evo 3D a few years ago, but it offers a pretty interesting twist, and we'll discuss that in a moment. It also has a Snapdragon 800 chipset, which, although it isn't the latest and greatest anymore, still does a respectable job of playing back games, viewing images, videos, as well as web browsing. It also offers the Fire OS, which is basically Amazon's skin on top of Android, even though it's been very heavily customized, most of the traditional Android apps will still run just fine. In terms of design, the Fire Phone is quite reminiscent of the Nexus 4 in my opinion. That's because it has a glass back. It's also kind of similar to the iPhone 4 and 4S. Um, it makes the phone feel pretty premium in the hand, even though it still is a black slab, which is pretty much the norm in terms of smartphones these days. It doesn't venture too far out of its comfort zone uh, in terms of design choice. However, it is pretty sleek and easily pocketable. The back features access to the Amazon logo and also a 13 megapixel autofocus enabled camera with an LED flash that works decently even though sometimes it uh, finds it a little bit difficult to focus under low light as well as uh, under closer environments, but we'll discuss that later on. On the very bottom of the device, you have access to two stereo speakers, which are pretty loud and offer a nice balanced sound. There's also a micro USB port for charging and syncing, and the very top features a third actual speaker grill, uh, which is a pretty good design because when you're holding the phone, it creates a very immersive listening experience if you are listening to music or video clip. There's also a power jack on the very top, which is tactile responsive, and a 3.5mm jack for listening to music. The actual left-hand side of the device features access to a volume rocker that's also tactile, responsive, and risen above the surface, in addition to a camera launch key. Now you can tap on this once to immediately launch into the camera, uh, regardless of the phone's state. So if it's currently off, I can tap on it once and it basically just goes and jumps into the camera right away, or I can hold on it to open uh, Firefly, which is Amazon's kind of search engine. It allows it to recognize different barcodes uh, and scan things in a smart way and allows you to purchase them or search the web for them uh, if you are interested. There's also a nano SIM card. This is kind of interesting. Uh, it's not a traditional micro SIM card, but it's even smaller, so that's something to take note of. The bezels along the Fire Phone are crafted out of a soft touch rubber, which makes the phone quite easy to grip, even though the very back and the front are made out of glass and they are fingerprint magnets. The very front features a simple home key, and that's basically it. You find access to four cameras along the top uh, left and right corners of the phone, which are used for the 3D technology. It's not an actual 3D display in the sense uh, of the Evo 3D was, but it basically scans your face, and because it knows where your face's position is using infrared technology, it allows uh, the phone to display different images that kind of moves as your face moves, which creates a pseudo 3D effect. There's also a front-facing camera along the side of the earpiece, which is 5 megapixels and produces some pretty good shots, even in low-light situations, as, long, as well as a earpiece. So, as we turn the phone on, this uh, kind of 3D technology becomes quite transparent. It also uses the gyroscopes and accelerometers to move along, and creates a pretty interesting visual effect. Uh, overall, the display is quite rich as well. There are deep colors, deep blacks, it's very saturated despite not being an AMOLED panel, and the viewing angles are also quite wide. So overall, we are pleased with the screen technology being used here. It's quite innovative and easy to use. So as we slide up, we can see that Fire OS, uh, which has been heavily customized off of Android, is basically the same as 
what we saw on a lot of Fire OS based tablets, uh, Amazon Fire tablets, uh, even though there are a few other tweaks that uh, they have been added onto the Fire phone. For instance, there are a lot of uh, side notification drawers that, be, that can be dragged uh, through the left and through the right as you open up various apps. Uh, but the main aspects, including the drag down notification drawer from the very top, is retained from Android. The same thing goes with the universal app drawer if you slide your way upwards, can be found as well. This is a very gesture-heavy uh, operating system, or I should say a skinned operating system, where everything relies on the corners of the screen for you to interact with. And I think that it's a pretty intuitive as well as interesting uh, user interface or graphical user interface. It's not quite as smooth or elegant as the Nokia N9, which also relied heavily on gestures, but it's a step in the right direction. And in the notification drawer, we have access to things like the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, there's also GPS settings. Uh, we have a Mayday setting, which is basically a live help client. You can tap on that and you will be directed into someone who can help you access whatever, whatever function you need uh, help accessing. And it uses a front-facing camera to create a live video call 24-7, which shows quite a bit of dedication from Amazon's part. It's an aspect that sets the Fire Phone apart from other flagship smartphones on the market. It also makes it a decent choice for maybe elderly people or for children or for people who are using a smartphone for the first time because of this Mayday functionality. There's also access to a flashlight, which is built in, uh, allows you to use the LED flash as a flashlight, and also a universal search icon in the very top. The carousel-like view, which the Fire OS relies on, basically piles up as you use more and more apps and close them up over time. Uh, to be honest, I don't think this is the best implementation uh, in terms of a home screen, uh, just because maybe, I guess, if you constantly use one app, it's going to ne be near the front, but uh, if you always have to find something, it might be located somewhere else if you are someone who multitasks a lot and constantly has maybe 10 or 15 apps open, that becomes a little bit difficult to keep track of. Uh, with that being said, the 3D technology also comes into play here. As you can see, all the icons basically rotate, and down below each, each icon, you have access to a list of recommended apps uh, that's been compiled by Amazon. These you can download or purchase for free or for a certain amount of money in the Amazon App Store, and it's pretty intuitive and easy to use. Taking a quick look at the camera next, uh, again, it's nothing exactly to write home about. Compared to other 12 and 13 megapixel shooters out there, we found it to be about average. Uh, it's pretty quick to focus and take a shot, and the HDR mode does a good job of capturing your shots as well. And there's also plenty of settings to go through. Uh, with that being said, sometimes it has trouble focusing, and detail seems to be a little bit lacking compared to other flagship devices by HTC and Samsung. However, there is a huge selling point from the Fire's uh, camera, which is that it stores it on the cloud. Basically, when you purchase it, it comes with unlimited cloud storage for all your photos and videos. This is a pretty cool feature. So basically, you don't have to worry about the 32 gigs of built-in built storage running out because of your media that you take with the phone's camera. It's consistently going to be updated to the cloud uh, and hence basically have unlimited storage in that department, which is certainly very compelling. However, the cloud storage functionality is a little bit sluggish. Whenever I take an image at the max resolution, which is uh, 13 megapixels, let's say, it, it takes almost a minute to completely load itself in the background onto the cloud, sometimes longer. So if you take, uh, if you're on vacation and you take maybe 100 images, and then you have to wait for maybe two days for it to completely load uh, with the phone on and doing itself in the background. So that's something to take note of. It takes a little bit of time to load. Otherwise, battery life seems to be pretty good. I averaged roughly two to three days of usage before I had to recharge it. Kind of depends on how much you use it, but I suspect that the 3D technology being used here with the eye tracking and face tracking drains the battery a little bit faster than a traditional Android phone would. So that's something to take note of. Uh, but otherwise, it seems to do a decent job. In terms of call quality, the Fire Phone is pretty good. It originally went on AT&T's network in the States. So uh, in terms of phone quality, the microphone is quite strong. Reception is also decent. Uh, the speakerphone quality is also loud and crisp. I would say that in noisier environments, it struggles a little bit more, but overall it's a very decent performer in terms of call quality, which is quite important because like anything, a smartphone is still a phone. Uh, the messaging client on here works nicely. The email client works as expected. You can still sync up with uh, Gmail, for instance, if you want to check your email. The Silk web browser, which is one of the 
main selling points or so Amazon claims uh, to load up pages extremely quickly does work pretty well. Uh, I would say that uh, it does a decent job, almost as good as Chrome, in some areas even better, in some slightly worse. Uh, but for the most part, it does a decent job loading up uh, pages. So let's say I want to search up OS reviews. You can see that the pop-up keyboard is pretty responsive and easy to type on. Uh, it shows you if you, uh, you've typed something wrong and corrects it automatically. So let's check OS reviews. And after a few seconds, it should pop up. Uh, this does support flash elements in the browser as well. So if you are looking at a page like the New York Times, which has videos embedded onto it, you should be able to play back and interact with those elements directly in the page, which is a nice selling point. So you can see that we have, for instance, this mobile YouTube page loaded uh, that I can click on and interact with. So Pinch Zoom is also pretty responsive and lucid uh, overall if you are looking at a more complex site. So web browsing is a decent uh, experience on here, pretty good. Some other uh, different uh, applications that are built in out of the box, we can slide upwards to reveal them. We have access to a basic calculator. There's basic Amazon services like there's shopping, uh, games, audiobooks. Of course, there's music. Uh, what's nice about the Fire Phone is when you first turn the device on, it, it tells you to sign in with your Amazon account. So basically, you can instantly track your purchases if you have any uh, traditionally stored on your computer. It also syncs up all of the songs you've purchased through Amazon, all the ebooks you purchased, and you can quickly download those again for free and have access to them on the phone. Another interesting thing about the Fire Phone is if you buy it brand new, it comes with one year service of Prime, which gives you access to a, a wide selection of different TV shows and programs that you can watch for free. So it comes bundled with this nice, almost $100 value in terms of media consumption. That's something to consider. Or if you already have a uh, subscription, it basically adds one year more, which is certainly a pretty good deal considering that uh, this phone now can be purchased for a pretty low cost. Another thing to consider here is uh, the fact that Prime basically gives you uh, free shipping on Amazon products, at least on supported products. Let's just click on maps and let's see if we can search somewhere such as the Space Needle. So let's say we want to go on to here, we can see that the Space Needle has fully loaded. And as I tilt the phone upwards, you can see that the Space Needle seems to be popping off the page, which is certainly very cool. It doesn't work with every single landmark yet, but uh, it is pretty compatible in terms of major landmarks and overall a pretty interesting way and funky way to interact with content. Some final tidbits to take note of, there is a Docs application, which allows you to store any documents, text files, and PDF documents directly onto a cloud drive. That's the same cloud drive used to store the images taken from the Fire Phone's camera. There's also a wallet feature on here, which uses the NFC chipset to wirelessly pay using your phone. Same thing as Apple Pay, which is pretty useful. There's a fire guide, uh, some other puzzle games that takes advantage of the phone's cameras. Uh, for instance, Planet Puzzles is a preloaded game. Same thing with the Clay Doodle application. So let's say I wanted to solve a puzzle or something. It's currently loading. Um, as far as gameplay is, is concerned in terms of graphically intensive games, they load pretty quickly. Uh, there's not too much stutter either, although the phone does get slightly warm in the very back where the uh, glass is comes into contact with your hands. That's something to take note of. But overall, it has some pretty respectable performance as to be expected with a Snapdragon 800 device. Where, when you're looking at it, it allows you to rotate this cube and then connect any two colors with, with the dots are showing up. And once you're done with all three colors, it advances onto the next level. So it basically uses this 3D technology with the cameras to uh, take gameplay one step further. The same can be said about the Clay Doodle application, which I talked about. Um, it basically allows you to 3D doodle and sketch as well as create molds uh, out of clay, which is pretty interesting. So for example, this is a face mold that is one of the standard molds. You can use it to create three-dimensional shapes, uh, which is kind of interesting as well. So going back again, we can take a look at some other things on here. There is a file reader. Uh, there are other apps you can install, of course, but that's basically it as far as main apps built on here is concerned. Uh, the main emphasis on here is to use uh, Amazon services, just like an Android phone has the emphasis on using Google services. So that includes accessing um, Amazon for buying things with the, you know, the actual search functionality, Firefly. So if I want to tap on this for a few seconds, and let's say I have a Nintendo DS. If it scans the code in the very back, it's gonna focus and then look that up on the internet and then it's gonna to want to push you to purchase the item through amazon.com. So it's on basically a portal for you to access other Amazon services and for you to spend more money 
on Amazon products. However, at the end of the day, the Amazon Fire Phone, I think, is a solid smartphone because it has a host of innovative functions and the whole gesture-based interface is actually pretty in intuitive and easy to use, at least in my opinion. With that being said, there are a lot of gimmicks as well. There's a lot of flashy elements uh, and things sometimes take a little bit of time to load. One such example would be the carousel view of your applications. I think that it's not as good as maybe a set number of applications that you want to define and then keep on using time after time, such as a Windows page or maybe uh, like an Android page populated by your favorite widgets and applications. So at the end of the day, the Fire Phone, now as we head into 2016, uh, is I think a bit more compelling than it was before, and that's because uh, you can now purchase it at a lower price point. Unlocked sub $200, it's a much better deal than $200 with a two-year service. And uh, of course, it's a huge discount compared to the original unlocked price of over $500. So a pretty good choice. Uh, it offers a decent processor and performance it is relatively decent as well for this price point. To learn more information about the Amazon Fire Phone, be sure to check out our full written review, but this has been our in-depth video review. Thanks for watching here at OS Review.